It's time to get the sledgehammer ready for our next dino day and track attack. So as I promised, there's a bunch of modifications that we're doing to this thing from basically more power and more range, and we're gonna start now. And in order to start with the first thing, which is gonna be mods to the volute, here, we gotta take this thing apart. So I'm gonna take it apart while I tell you exactly what we're gonna do. So for the volute mods, one of the things that's gonna be really key is that we're actually going to send it out to a company called Line to Line Coatings. If you're a car guy, you may be familiar with them. Uh, they do piston coatings and all kinds of stuff. Well, one of the things that they're doing lately is they're coating the inside of volutes to minimize the uh, impeller to volute clearance, the compressor clearance, basically. The idea there, of course, being that what it's gonna do is it's gonna increase the efficiency of the compressor itself. And of course we need as much efficiency as we can get simply because that is the nature of the beast. We are maximizing, oh, the stud is actually coming out. We are maximizing the compressor itself. That just kind of came out on its own. So wants to go out that way, fine, easy enough. I wanna do a few other things as well to the volute. Uh, I want to clean it up a bit. I don't know if you can really see in here, but it's, it's actually a very smooth and clean casting. So there's not really much to do there. But before we ship it off to line to line, I should very much like to just smooth it out. And that's solely because back in the day, I did a similar process to my twisted wedge heads and I put them on a flow bench and I picked up like 17 CFM just by smoothing the casting and the casting on those heads was actually really quite good. And this is kind of interesting because I have not taken this thing apart. Let's see. Well, it really kind of wants to stay there. There it goes. Oh, it's just the tape being cranky. So that was a little bit harder than I expected it to be. So now we're gonna take off the motor. That's pretty easy. That's just three six millimeter socket head screws. Now we can lift out the motor. We can take a look at our coupling. Everything looks quite nice. This is very minimal clearance around the edge here, but still perfect. It's not even loose, nothing. So that works out pretty well. So we're gonna sit, we're gonna ship this whole thing to line to line, this whole assembly. However, before we ship this whole assembly, and the reason for that is, is that halfway through the curing process, what they're gonna do is they're gonna reassemble this and they're going to spin the impeller and it's gonna basically clear the abradable coating off the inside of the volute. So that is a pretty slick game plan. However, before we send it to them, and I've already taken a photograph so that this is, uh, <laughs> how old am I, a photograph. All right, I've already taken a picture with my cell phone to get the orientation of this to the volute and the discharge in particular to get that squared away. But this should just lift right off. And it does. And here you go. Here are the guts of the sledgehammer. So this casting is actually, I know it's gonna be kind of difficult to see in there. So you can tell where at one point I had small, very, very little bit of contact right here in the, uh, in the volute. There's a little tiny, tiny mark here. And that's actually replicated right on the tips of the impeller. By the way, this thing spins nice and smooth. That's for sure. But this volute has actually seen an impeller crash before I bought it used. 
Uh, but hey, these things are hard to find, so you take what you can get, right? But this is another reason why we're going to do this abradable coating. Now, this abradable coating is the kind of coating you'd see on the rotors of an Eaton M112. In fact, going into the way back machine when I was screwing around with a Jaguar M112, you can actually see the rotor coating. It looks like a velvety black sort of finish. So we're gonna take this thing to the porting station. I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. I'm not gonna remove anything, you know? I mean, ideally, yeah, you do one change at a time, but at some point we gotta get this thing to the track and on the dyno. So in this case, we're gonna do two things simultaneously. But again, I really don't expect much out of this given the condition of the, the volute inside and how smooth it actually is already. In fact, I am kind of second guessing doing this at all because it's actually a remarkably good casting. But, you know, whatever. I'll just clean it up just a little bit, and then we'll ship this off to line to line. And while that's getting taken care of, we're going to pull the engine out so we can get a new torque converter put in. And we also have our meth injection kit. So that's, uh, that's all coming up, too. But let's take it to the porting station right now. So there you go. After a couple hours, I was able to get about 80, 85 percent of the inside of the volute. Uh, primarily used a flap disc like this. this is, I think all the abrasives except for the Scotch Bright stuff are 80 grit, and obviously a Tootsie Roll on an extension. And when you use a die grinder with these things, you have to use a speed controller, otherwise they just go too fast. And then the real secret is these little flap discs in the Dremel, because what you could do is you could put these in inside first and then put them in the collet in the dremel and then work your way around and that way you can get inside pretty well so we're going to ship this off to line to line coatings where they're going to work their magic there's a lot more cool stuff coming up give me a thumbs up go ahead and subscribe and i will catch you all on the next one